Welcome to our UX design crash course on spatial design that will teach you the foundations of designing apps for the Apple Vision Pro. This entire free course is designed to upskill you so that in the next few months you are prepared to apply the best internships and jobs in the field of UX design. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. Alright, so in this episode number two, we'll go through the most basic foundational principles of spatial design, which is basically us understanding how we can design apps for the Apple Vision Pro. The entire video is split into three modules. Before we get into the guidelines, we'll first understand what is spatial design and how is it different from designing apps for the iPhone or a tablet or a computer. Then in module two, we'll understand the first principle. There are five of them, but today we'll understand just the first principle of spatial design which is around designing familiar experiences and in the last module I will share all my free resources and a roadmap for the next five days that you can use to upskill yourself for free. So let's start with module number one. What exactly is spatial design? So for a very long time all of us have been learning about how do we design apps for a phone and within the phone you can either have apps for the iOS or for the Android. According to the platform that you choose if I am working on an iPhone app, then I need to follow guidelines that are under the iOS HCI guidelines, which is basically a set of rules that they have defined. Now on the phone, you just have a Y axis and an X axis because it's two dimensional, right? So you have limited real estate. But now that we have Vision Pro, they have introduced a new operating system, which is called the Vision OS. And this basically deals with 3D space. So you not only have two axes, but you also have a third axis, which is the Z axis. Now, just by introducing this one Z axis, a lot of guidelines actually change. The question is how is spatial design different from mobile design? See, most importantly, as you would have guessed, we are now in the 3D space. When you open an app on the phone, it stays on a single frame. But if you look at something from the Vision Pro, it can either come close to you, it can go away from you, it can go up, it can go down, and you can have multiple windows from left to right. In episode number one, we understood what is the difference between augmented reality and virtual reality. And just to summarize, in augmented reality, you see things on top of your real world. But in virtual reality, every part of your real world disappears and it's a completely new world in front of your eyes. When that happens, you need to design experiences that cater to a 360 degree point of view as to no matter where you look, there is an experience ready for you. Second, we have spatial audio being introduced. So audio plays a huge role even when we live our day to day lives. If somebody is calling you from the right side, that is also a cue for you. You don't have to see something to know that someone is calling you on the right side. So in this case, because we are dealing with 3D interfaces, it's not just about what you can see, but also about what you can hear, that too from all dimensions. And third, there are new kinds of inputs. When we use a tablet, we obviously use our fingers. When we are using a computer, we use the keyboard. But now with Vision Pro, it's not just about using your hands or your voice, but you can also use your eyes. And along with eyes, you can also have your game controllers. It has a hover menu that comes on top of your manual keyboard. So there are a lot of input fields, new forms of input that have been introduced just for the Vision Pro. Because of these three factors, a lot of new guidelines has been introduced. And in January or February, there would be a huge demand for designers, developers and product managers who understand these guidelines. So my goal here is to educate about you all of these important differences. And that is what this multi video playlist is all about. Now, just as a quick example, this is how the home screen looks like on the Vision Pro. So if you're an iPhone user, you know how this is on your phone, right? But in this case, there are some significant differences that you can notice. Firstly, there are no opaque screens, right? You have things floating in air. Another difference is the fact that all the icons are in a landscape format. So instead of filling up things vertically, which is a very common way to fill up things on the iPhone here, because our field of view is wide, it is always better to keep things in a widescreen landscape mode. Now we will get into the details of these user interfaces later on, uh, but just to share some exciting things and we will keep playing videos as I'm talking about it. The Vision Pro can actually detect where you are looking and where you are staring and they keep this information private so they don't give it away to the app developers. It stays within the system and if you were to look at a specific icon just to show some feedback, some layers of the icon would actually elevate into the Z space. So this is my Y axis 
axis this is my x axis but this 3d thing is my z axis so all these small small interactions play a huge role in giving feedback to the user uh, because you can obviously see things and when you see at something every single component on the vision pro acknowledges your vision in fact they have introduced a new material which is called glass so we had a uh, touch this slightly in episode number one as well but just to reiterate this glass is not just a basic uh glass morphism texture it actually adapts to the surroundings the edges reflect light and unlike our windows softwares right or even in mac you have a dark dark theme and you have a light theme but in glass there is no concept of light or dark turns out it can adapt to your environment so if i were to take a quick example this is the apple music app which is for the mac okay so you have all of these guidelines uh, about having a top nav bar a side bar all of these icons the surface is opaque right and then in apple's guidelines they have shown how the music app would look like if it was made for the vision pro now let's see some significant differences the material is is no longer opaque you have a search bar on the top and here you can always add voice so this is a very good practice that you can always keep in all your input fields that it is always better to talk about the input field rather to type uh, there are some extra menus that are on the left and on the right so we will be covering these in detail later on but just to give you a clue uh, that these small small things are playing a huge role in terms of creating the entire structure now as i mentioned this entire glass actually adapts to your environment lighting so if you are using your vision pro in a dark room all the text that you see on top of your glass material actually becomes more vibrant and there's a new property that they have introduced it's called vibrancy so rather than switching from a light theme into a dark theme or vice versa they have introduced this new feature of being vibrant now when it comes to input fields this is something which is very very interesting let's just say you have three icons on the top right corner and you want to select one of them so all you need to do is look at that icon and then vision pro can track your hands at the bottom so if your hands are rested on your knee all you need to do is tap so you have drag you have long press and then you have a quick tap and of course we'll have a separate dedicated video on these inputs as well this one single interaction is a game changer because now you're actually communicating with your eyes and then to select something you're just tapping your fingers like this without floating them like this you're actually keeping them rested at the bottom uh, but the vision pro can still capture it they also have these 3d keyboards which are a part of their reality kit so reality kit is this framework that developers use and they would have all of these structures ready to use so you can use this keyboard and as a user of the vision pro you can just type in the air right and select the letters that you want they also keep talking about the concept of a field of view which is that anytime you look at something your eyes are always focused in the center right so all the important interactions even the button system even the components that they've created all cater to the fact that our eyes are always concentrated in the center so of course uh, this was a very quick module we have two modules left but just to quickly revise everything that we've done till now we understood that how the z axis changes everything about the vision pro guidelines if you were in a two dimensional space there was no spatial audio there was only one category of input there were only two axes but just by introducing one more axis the entire game changes then we also had a quick look on how the new ui guidelines would look like and how they would influence the user experience of someone who's using the vision pro and then we briefly touched upon some new forms of input now this was just to make you mindful about the fact that we are now entering in a new age where people will slowly dissolve the lines between technology and our day-to-day -day lives and this is step number one eventually we will come to a point where even a vision pro would be invisible so not sure uh, if you have researched about humane so go to youtube watch this video by imran chaudhary on a disappearing technology that is how it looks like i will paste the tedx link in the description but basically it's a crazy crazy video that talks talks about technology that very seamlessly fits into our life and as ux designers it's very very important for us to keep evolving and to keep adapting to all of these new changes so now we come to the most important part where we understand the first out of five principles of spatial design which is basically designing experiences that look familiar now i'll tell you what this means on the top we have the apple music app for the mac os which is basically the laptop or the imax and then at the very bottom we have something for the vision pro so basically all applications will go from 
the desktop version to the Vision OS version and see what is happening here. In terms of the text and the structure, a lot of it remains the same. But in terms of the surface, you now have glass instead of an opaque surface. Some of your buttons have popped outside the main window and they have jumped into the toolbar and the tab bar. So basically this is your tab bar and then at the bottom you have your toolbar. I might be saying the words incorrect but we will obviously have concrete definitions for all of these later on. But basically it is not necessary to put all your clickable actions within your main window. So they are recommending you to keep stacks of these icons maybe outside floating so that they don't cover the main content, right? So let's figure out how do you even implement this. And before we understand the details, we first need to define this entire window and how it works. So as I said, the window is made up of a glass material that creates enough contrast and also adapts to the surrounding lighting system. So as I said, this would be in a bright room, this would be in a dark room and notice how it detects light and then instantly brightens everything up and this is a new property called vibrancy. Now you can move, close and resize the windows. Now let's understand how do you size these windows in the first place. At the very bottom of every single window, you would have this bar and if you look at this bar or if you drag with this bar, you will be able to reposition your window. By default, it would always be around five to six feet away from your eyes, but you can always bring it closer to you you can always push it back. You can always close it if you look at this icon right here. And if you tap it with your fingers, you'd be able to close the window. And then even if you look at the corners, you can always resize from the corner edges as well. When it comes to sizing, you also need to understand the fact that these windows actually follow wherever you go. So if you want to move them, you can always move them from the window bar. Otherwise, you can also readjust the position of these windows if you move from one point to another. So let's just say if you're sitting on a couch and somebody says, can you please shift? then you're essentially moving your position, right? You want the window to move with you. In that case, you can always readjust. It enters like a half opacity mode. And then if they have this thing called a crown, right? So if you triple click on the crown, it would readjust. So now it would identify where your new position is and then align the entire system according to your new spot, right? Now, you can have multiple sizes of these windows. So in their entire documentation, they have said that you need to choose a comfortable window size based on your context. For example, Safari is tall, so people can see more of the web page. Whereas a tool like Keynote, which is for making presentations, is wide to fit full size presentations. So you can have something which is very wide into 16 is to 9. You can always have a 4 is to 3 sort of a modal, which can be, you know, for payments or for logins. So this can be for payments and for logins. So it's not like I would reuse the same size again and again. You can obviously have something which is taller in size. So this could be for the photos app, right? Because most of your iPhone photos would be tall in size. So you can always always put them in a taller box. Otherwise, if you're looking at a panoramic image, then it can be extremely wide as well. So they have given us a lot of freedom in terms of the sizing of this window. So you need to be smart enough. For example, in Safari, all landing pages are vertical. So it makes more sense to keep something which is tall in height. But when I look at something like Keynote, they have actually allocated a very wide canvas to fit all the features in one single view. Now let's understand tab bars and toolbars. So as I said, this is your main window, but these are some extra controls that are layered above the main window. So they're always accessible and they never cover any of the content. So they provide more room for all the visual content. Now tab bar is on the same axis while toolbar is slightly in the front. Now, what do I mean by that? Look at this window right here. They are essentially on the same plane, but when I take a look at this bottom bar right here, which is actually called the toolbar, you'd realize that it is slightly ahead of my main window. It is actually slightly ahead on the Z axis with a subtle overlap. So these are some subtle guidelines that they have introduced just to keep some uniformity, just to have some aesthetic throughout the experience. Now, if you don't want to get into tab bars and toolbars, if you don't have enough functionalities, you can always have external sections as well. So in Safari, you have an external section for creating a new tab. I think this this is for a new window and I think this is for copying the URL. I'm still not sure but the point is that if you have just three functionalities, you can squeeze them up into a separate section. So there's a gap in between them. They're not stuck with each other, right? So you separate controls from the content. So the navigation bar is set apart from the web page to let the page take the entire focus. So this is how the Safari looks like. You have a wider window which basically shows you all the main content and then you have this top navigation bar that shows you the entire URL. 
url and all these extra functionality now if you need a larger canvas which you will write sometimes you have multiple tabs or sometimes you have more options to show in most cases you can always have two windows in one single app so in this case you can actually open multiple windows within safari notice one interesting thing that when i stack i'm stacking these windows from left to right because for our neck looking left to right is easier than looking up and down so even from an experience perspective you need to make sure that it is very very easy for your user to browse through all of your content and like other platforms apps can have multiple windows which are useful in certain cases in fact you can also have distinct actions floating in a separate small window altogether so in keynote they have this thing called a presenter display at the very bottom where you can basically see the current slide and the next slide so instead of keeping it here in a separate window and taking more width you can put it in a smaller window right so this is a hybrid setting you have a wide window and then the presenter displays in a smaller window so you can get very creative with this in fact if you want you can also move this to the right side i can take this window bar and push it to the right side because these are all different individual windows for me so i can resize them i can bring them closer to me i can take them away from me all freedom is available for each and every window one huge difference that we need to be mindful of is the fact that we will be designing not in pixels but in points now i have made a detailed video on this in concept in our UX design course uh, won't go into the details of what is a point and what is a pixel but just to dumb it down to a very very basic level one pixel is 0.75 points and in Figma people actually design in pixels the use case of points is that points let you scale your UI as you go from one device to another so because you are designing in point if you move to a very big display all the content readjusts so it is still legible even if you use a huge display it is just to make things more responsive across multiple devices now i'll tell you why do we need this in the first place because we are dealing with 3d space by default this is my zeroth position let's just say that this is my x z axis and by default it is in the middle of the z axis this becomes my y axis this becomes my x axis so it is at 0 comma 0 comma 0 okay now if i push this window away from obviously it is going far so it has to scale so that legibility is maintained so as people move windows they scale larger as they move away and scale smaller as they move closer to them so in this case because i have pushed the window at the back because it is going away from me the size has increased so that the legibility is maintained whereas in this case if i bring the window closer to me I have to shrink the font size because imagine if I take a notebook and if I push it very very close to your face if you had to read what is written on those pages you'd have to shrink it down otherwise it would become too close to your eyes and you will not be able to read any of the content right so these are very very intuitive things and in fact they have also created guidelines for every every small little item uh, including icons and labels so for example in this case you need to have a 60 point by 60 point bounding box for your icon but that doesn't mean that the entire icon is for 60 points the real icon this entire thing is for 44 by 44 points then there is external padding on the outside so when they are stacked together the minimum distance between them is of 16 points so this is a very very important guideline that they have put to make sure that there is 8 point here and 8 point here and you have all of these things spaced out properly now you would ask why because your eyes also need some gap to identify these things right if something is 5 feet away from you your eyes need to look at something which is at a specific distance so that even vision pro can understand or where you're looking so just to quickly revise module number two we understood the basic structure and the concept of movement for windows so a new concept called windows it can have tab bars it can have toolbars it has a glass material and then there's a specific structure and a movement order to it then we understood that they come in different sizes you can move them they adjust to wherever you're sitting and then we also understood how scaling works in spatial design and how we need to shift from pixels to points now before we end this video there are some important free resources that you can use to upscale yourself before i release the next video even though i will be summarizing all these important things it would still help you to go through these resources so i'll tell you the roadmap for the next five days take out just 45 minutes each and every day and go through the resources i'm going to mention next i'm going to give you a bunch of resources every single day pick one and go through them i will also give you a figma file which has been released by apple themselves they have created a set of guidelines 
lines you can import them in your figma and then try them out so duplicate the figma file and then just test your ideas you don't have to launch an app just play around explore what all is there in that library and then make sure you document all your learnings on notion this is very very important right so this is the website official documentation that has been released by apple and you will have all the links in description here they have this page called learn about vision os and if you don't want to wait for me you can always go through this content now if you have never done ux design i would recommend you to first understand the basics of mobile design so i have created a free course in both hindi and in english it's a 15 episode course and each and every video is very important especially the last 6 to 7 videos so you will find the link in description all these foundational concepts are very very important for you because we cover palettes typography spacing all of these things and if you don't know those it would become very difficult for you to implement your ideas on the vision pro now if you go to figma community all you need to do is search for apple design resources vision os click on this button and then you will have access to all of their component libraries so once you finish uh, the first 5 videos of this multi video playlist on spatial design you will have enough idea about implementing your inspiration and your concept using this figma file don't use any other figma file own official documentation now remember i gave you this one tip that document all your notes on notion if you don't know what notion is i have created a very detailed video on how i learn and how i document my learnings on notion so it's a video called how to use notion beginners tutorial this 17 minute video will give you a lot of value it will save you a lot of time and if you've been planning to enter ux design this year in the next Five to six months itself, and you don't know where to start, what resources to use. I recently made a video of ten UX design resources that will really, really help you deliver high quality work. Even though the fifteen episode course is great, this video listed some incredible UX design resources that you can use. So with that, we end our episode number two for spatial design. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel because we will be coming up with some very, very cool content on spatial design, on AR and VR design. In fact, we've been making some very detail videos on ai tools like chat gpt and mid journey i personally believe that it is very very important for us to evolve and adapt so that we can make the most of our careers we can deliver the highest quality of work as designers as creative professionals if you like this video please make sure you comment below let me know what you would like me to cover in the next video as well you can always connect with me on instagram on @anshmehra.ai with that being said i hope that you're taking care of your mind and body this is your dost anshmehra signing out If you like this video make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button I regularly upload videos on UX design marketing and storytelling